Greetings, YouTube. This, this next one is kind of beautiful. In Richmond, Lichburg, a red legislator learns to beware of what you ask for. Um, why would a legislator file a bill to make to do something he doesn't want done? Uh, Delegate Wendell Walker, Republican in Lynchburg, introduced a bill to remove a statue of Harry F. Byrd, with a Y, of, um, from Capitol Square. Not because of the former governor and senator's part in history supporting segregation, but as a retaliation for Gover Governor Northam's support for Virginia cities to have the power to remove Confederate statues around the state. After all, Byrd was a Democrat. To Walker's surprise, his Democratic colleagues are looking forward to removing the statue of one of Virginia's most racist sons. He is trying to withdraw the bill. The Rules uh, Committee has denied his request. So let's make that clear. The governor is going to sign a bill that allows Virginia cities to say, hey, that's a Confederate statue. Get those statues out of here. Those represent racism white supremacy, and an ugly history that should no longer be blotting the landscape. Awesome! They are statues to traitors and to racists. They should go. So, in response, this guy, Wendell Walker, said, no, no, well, you do that. I'm going to put forward a bill that gets rid of that statue of an old Democratic dude in retaliation. And the Democrats are like, you know that old Democratic dude? He was a racist. Go ahead! Take his statue. We don't care. And he just cannot comprehend that. There's a comment here that somebody made in relation to this that I'm going to read for you. Um, this is an excellent example of how the GOP is so used to doing everything in bad faith that they assume that's how everyone else is acting too. They assume nobody is actually serious about the reasons for removing these statues and that the Democrats are only interested because it hurts Republicans. Remember, removing statues of racists really annoy Republicans. Because hurting Democrats, regardless of whether it helps Republicans, is the impetus behind most Republican choices. Uh, for good, for a group that will literally claim to believe anything, even multiple contradictory things, if they think there's political benefit in the moment to do so, the idea that anyone has genuinely held beliefs is incomprehensible. And, and there you have that in a nutshell. He just wants to hurt Democrats. And all he sees is that that statue was of a guy who was a Democrat. Now, it's important, before I go any further, that I remind people that the racists of the 19th century fought a war to keep slavery up and running in America. The less racist people fought them against them in that war. I say slightly less racist because, let's face it, even the most egalitarian folks in uh, late 19th century America were not what we would call woke. Um, and in the 1960s, the party name switched. So the racists that had tried to preserve slavery in the 19th century switched parties and continued to be racists. They just changed the names. So just because the parties at the time of the Civil War were called Democrats and Republicans doesn't matter. They could have been called cats and dogs. In the 1960s, those names changed to dogs and cats. The political beliefs of the people using those names didn't change, though. The racists who were called cats became the racists that were called dogs. That's just how it worked. So I don't want to hear about the fact that, well, it was the Democrats that supported slavery in the 19th century. Correct. They did. Because at the time, they were the party of racism. And then, in the 60s, the Republicans became the party of racism. Because of the Civil Rights Movement. Because all the Democrats switched to Republicans because they were disgusted that one of their own would actually grant human rights to black people. So political parties change their allegiances over history. That's important to remember. The Republicans of the 19th century are not the Republicans of the 21st century, who are the party of white nationalism. 
they would have been buddy buddies with all the racists in the 19th century who tried to preserve slavery. And don't give me that state rights bullshit. They were the state rights that they were trying to defend were the right to buy and sell human beings like cattle. It wasn't a state rights issue. It was a slavery issue. History is on my side in that one, folks. Always has been. You just don't like that fact. So we have a guy who self-owned himself in the most epic way you could imagine. Take that statue down. It's a Democrat. And the Democrats today of 21st century are like, okay, that dude was racist. Take a statue down. But now this guy has to defend not removing a statue of a Democrat. Because that Democrat, at the time it was put up, was a racist. So this guy is defending a statue of a racist, just like he would be defending the statue of a racist if they had been in the Confederates. It's amazing, don't you think, that I'll have people here on YouTube point out to me that the Democrats are the ones that were defending slavery in the 19th century, and yet it is the modern Republicans that are trying to keep those Democratic statues of Confederate officers up and standing. So if if the Republicans despise the Democrats so much today, why are they why are they defending the Democratic officers of the Civil War? Why is that? They don't like the Democrats, we know that. So they're not defending the Democrats of the Civil War. They're defending the racists of the 19th century to appease the racists of the 21st century. Because the the GOP is the party of white supremacy, of white nationalism, of racism. The names don't matter. Which political party those statues were put up by doesn't matter. The modern GOP is defending the racists of the 19th century and stunned when the modern Democrats say it's okay to remove statues of racists from the 19th century. Funny about that. The GOP will fight so damn hard to preserve racism, won't do a goddamn thing to help Americans in the 21st century.